Okay, before we get started on my video, there's just something that uh, I need to bring up. There, there's something that's just been bugging me, and I, I, I don't know if it's bugging anybody else or if you've had the question about it or anything like that. But uh, Don from Restore Old Radios, I, I, I've just often wondered where does he get some of the coolest radios and all these spare parts that seem to fit exactly. I, it, it baffles me. I'm, I'm glad to say that Don's a friend of mine and that uh, he's been a very big influence on me in my videos and my radio work and what have you and I thank him for that. But I've kind of got to say that I did something a little bit sneaky. I, I went kind of behind his back and I, I was wondering about this. Where does he get this stuff? So I, I know I knew that he had to go get a transformer and look for a transformer. So I kind of did a little investigation, a little bit of snoop detective work and everything like that. So I was able to get a picture of Don in his warehouse. I don't know that this has ever been seen before or if he's ever been seen in this warehouse before, but I'm going to brace you for it. For the first time, here's Don in his warehouse of radio stuff. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, let's get back on the electronics a little bit while it's cold, wet, and rainy outside. <clears throat> I believe last time we talked about replacing this can home. Uh, I think we can use this particular uh, terminal strip. Uh, we can put it back in there. And uh, I've got some uh, two watt resistors uh, for the uh, 25,000. I believe I've got 27,000 ohm resistor. I do, and then the other one is an 80, is 80, 80, 8200 ohm, which that's as close as I could get to it. But uh, uh, while I was digging around in this particular area, I got to looking. Uh, if you'll remember, I explained that. That these capacitors, I've got two capacitors, one out of each end with the can or the uh, ground strip being the common. Well, when I got to this one, and this one is the 11, 11, let's see, where is it at? Eesh. Oh, the 11Z and the 11Y, which in that case, one is going to be uh, 0 0.001 microfarads and the other one's 0 0.01. And if you'll see in the circuit, there's the 11Y. This is a coupling capacitor from uh, the plate of... Um, the second detector, the 76, to the output tube, the 6B5. And the other one is a bypass to ground. So you would think if they had the same common lead here, that that would be the ground strap. Well, if you look real close, the ground strap is to ground. So that can't be the common. Now I chased my tail on this one and <clears throat> I went to a, uh, Antique Radio Forums and found, uh, I did a search and found this particular capacitor. And I'll, I'll pull it out and I'll show you. This one is different than the rest of them. And I'll explain it here as soon as I get it out. When I first got into this, I went in 
with the uh, assumption, and you know what a assume does, that all these capacitors had the common lead on the, the strap. And in this case, it was to chassis ground. Well, this dark line here is chassis ground. Well, here's the 11Z, and so if you're going in with that assumption, you think, well, that is the ground strap. Well, then when you look at 11Y, there's no way that 11Y and 11Z have a common at the ground because this one is a coupling, this one is a bypass. So after searching and uh, asking Don, my, my good buddy, uh, restore old radios, and uh, then I found it on uh, Antique Radio Forum, there is a, I don't know if it shows up on camera or not, but it says ground, ground right there on this particular one that came out of there. This lead was to the uh, uh, grid of the 6B5 output tube and this was to the plate of the 76 tube. This lead that says ground is common to this one and to this one. It <laughs> totally baffled me and uh, I think it's baffled people in the past, so hopefully this will document in the future. Now the rest of them, when I pull them, this will be the common, I believe. So we'll we'll make sure we check that. I put my little magic box on here and verified. They're in the ballpark, but I'm going to replace them. So I'll just replace them with two separate capacitors. What I did is I soldered that capacitor back in just for... Uh, historical purposes and I put a note and taped it to it and put the word note on it explaining the capacitor how it's different than the rest of them and that I left it in place for historical reasons. Uh, as you can see I went ahead and put that terminal strip in with the uh, replacement resistors. I've already got uh, this terminal moved and also this one move. Now this one, if you'll notice, it has these two coming to it. But look at this. I, I, I took tape off. It had just uh, electrical tape and they made this into a, a terminal. And as you can see, it's pretty messy. And this is pretty much the B plus, the uh, the filter cap, this was the main B plus coming in. So this, this goes to the uh, uh, speaker coil and various other things uh, coming off the B plus. Now what I think I'm doing now, I could probably come to here. It's the same difference to here, but this, this block is not going to be big enough. So what I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and put them on this spare. It's not the ground. This is the ground one. Put it on this one and then put the jumper from here to here and then put these two back on. And that way kind of distribute it between those two. And then we don't have this granddaddy <laughs> sitting up here in the middle of the, the thing and kind of uh, make this a little bit neater. In the last clip, I said that that capacitor uh, connected there was the main B plus. It was not. It, uh, it was actually this 33 microfarad, this one right here. So I went ahead and I put it to ground with this terminal. As you can see, uh, I, I cleaned all these leads up and put it onto this and just put a little jumper over here and then put all the rest of them. I've still got to put uh, replace this capacitor that I've clipped out. I've got to replace it with two capacitors and go through here and do the rest of it. And I know I've, I've heard you, I've heard you ever since you began. Uh, you, you just kept on. Yeah, I, I could hear you. You're saying, what are you doing with that line cord still in there you were saying get that out of your way and so there you go 
I heard you. So that's, uh, that's out of the way. Let me go ahead and uh, cover this. If you'll remember, uh, we mentioned that the 6B5 had been replaced with a 42 tube. And the way they did it, it's not a direct replacement, uh, but what they did is the 42 tube requires some bias on the cathode. And so what they did is they cut the, on the 6B5, the cathode is to the chassis crown. So what they did is they cut that loose and they inserted a 450 ohm resistor and a I believe a 25 microfarad capacitor, low voltage, like 50 volts or something like that, to provide bias for the 42 tube. Uh, there's the 450 uh, resistor and the 25 microfarad at 50 volts or so. So um, now where they got that at, let me put this insert up there. If you'll look uh, on the tube specifications of the 42 tube, you'll look down to the uh, using the Class A amplifier on the pentode collection connection and uh, you'll see that the cathode bias resistor on the cathode bias is based upon the plate voltage which is from 250 to 285 uh, volts was from 410 to 440 ohms. I, I, I suspect that they picked a 450 ohm since that was a standard value back in that day. And so that's how they uh, get, got the uh, bias for the cathode of the 42 tube. Of course we're going to cut this out and put it back to the original 6B5 circuit. Here's one thing I've started doing is I've been uh, doing the uh, videos. I've been looking at other videos and I see that mine are running 20 to 30 minutes and that's a little bit too long. So I'm going to start giving them up in a little bit uh, uh, shorter blocks. So we're going to continue uh, replacing the capacitors and cleaning up the insides of this a little bit more. And so we'll continue this in the next section. So from Larry from the Hills of Tennessee, thanks for watching.